Sup dogs, Deodi here, and with Whisper in the Woods finally completed, what better way to close out the series than to talk about ChatGBT in mid-journey and let you guys know how my experience went. As much as we like to think that it was all smooth sailing, there was actually a couple of rough waters we had to sail over before we reached our destination. So let's start with ChatGBT. And the things I'm going to be talking about are creating the story and the concept of a game, creating code with ChatGPT, and using ChatGPT to help you invent stuff. So in the beginning, creating the story actually went very, very well. I had to suggest a couple of different summaries for me, and I get to choose what I wanted. In the end, I decided that I did not want to create a town, I did not want to create any cities or hospitals, I just wanted trees. <laughs> you see, it wanted me to create towns, cities, no chat GBT, I want trees. So I asked it to create a story that took place in the woods for me, and it did just that. Now, just talking about the summaries by itself, I feel like ChatGPT has this, like, very set concept of certain things. Like, for each of the stories, at the very end, it suggested me to go with a sanity system for my game. Now, what I could have done is said, you know what, I don't want a sanity system, create me something else. But, I was interested. Moving on from there, it created me some characters, and it did it very well. It described their personality, described the sort of things that they wore, and I even asked it to list me five words to describe each of the characters, and it did just that. Even the names of the character came from ChatGBT. Now, the parts where ChatGBT kind of got lost was that when I asked it to tell me about the beginning, middle, and end, it kind of forgot what it summarized for me. In the original summary, it tells me that you, the player, goes in search of your sister who goes missing. But when I asked it to describe it, it said that the two sisters get lost together. So what I actually had to do was I copied the entire summary and said, Hey ChatGPT, based on this summary, tell me the beginning, middle, and end. And that worked, but later on as I asked ChatGPT to describe me a couple of different things, it again forgot about the summary. So it was a little bit odd, but you do have to remind ChatGPT of the overall story. But on the flip side, I was able to Frankenstein the pieces that did make sense coherently and put it into an overarching summary, all of which that I put in my development journal and is available in my supporter perk. Now, I also use ChatGPT to suggest puzzles to me in specific things, like how will the end fight go? And for the most part, while I didn't exactly use what it suggested, it did give me ideas. So while I would like to have been in the assistant for ChatGPT, I gotta admit that it did provide as a very good assistant for me. In a way, I can kind of say that it's the perfect friend that you don't have. <laughs> Except that he'll just agree to anything you say. <laughs> Which is exactly what makes them a perfect buddy. Now coding, I did not actually do for Whisper in the Woods, but I, last night, I spent an hour trying to see what ChatGBT can do with coding. And unfortunately, it did not work out at all. While it can provide you code, it is still your job to figure out what it is that it's writing and translate it appropriately for your game. So what I was trying to do was have it create a line of sight plugin, where if the player is in the line of sight of the enemy, it will just start chasing the player. Now unfortunately, I couldn't even get it to run. Mind you, my experience with software engineering is that I'm able to read it, I'm able to kind of understand what I read, but I'm not able to write any code myself. So while I could have spent the time reading and studying the code that it wrote to me, the whole purpose was to have ChatGPT write the code so I can copy and paste it straight into RPG Maker and make it run that way. But instead, what I had to do was have it create the code, learn it, understand it, debug it. In the end, it would take many, many hours to create a plugin. Almost as if that I'm better off writing it myself. Granted, I kind of feel like there's a certain skill level needed to work with AI. So in a way, imagine yourself with two paths. This path is learning, 
computer science and doing all of it yourself. And then this path is not knowing any computer science, but enough to work with ChatGPT and be able to help ChatGPT learn and do exactly what you want. So it kind of depends on how you want to spend your time, learning it yourself or trying to teach ChatGPT to do exactly the way you want it. I think in both versions, you do spend a lot of time just learning, maybe a little bit more in the computer science path as opposed to the ChatGPT AI path. But I think once you do reach that certain level, then it's kind of much more smoother sailing from there. Me personally, I think I would rather study the computer science myself so I have the full understanding. But if you go the ChatGPT AI path, then I'm sure you're going to reach your result a lot faster than me who's trying to study computer science and learn the algorithms that I needed to learn. Hmm. Now that I say that, I think I want to go this way. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, while I was trying to have ChatGPT write the code for me, it would always abruptly stop in the middle of writing its code. And it turns out this is a very common thing, and what you have to do is copy a block of that code and say, continue from this line, and then paste it. Paste that block, and then it'll start continuing again. Now, for whatever reason, I always get this error. I'm sure that if you guys know JavaScript in this case, then you'll know exactly how to fix it, just like that. But me, who didn't want to take the time to learn and read all of the code that ChatGPT created for me, uh, instead, I just ran into this bug and I got defeated many, many times. I even tried adding brackets or curly brackets and even the semicolon to hopefully solve this because that's why i assumed the error meant but did not do the trick instead i just got different errors so yeah that's pretty much coding in a nutshell for whisper in the woods i did not have ChatGPT suggest any inventing for me and the main reason was that i knew exactly what i was doing i had enough experience with rpg maker to do all the sort of things i wanted to do while i can ask ChatGPT to do one for me as an example i have a little too much experience with rpg maker to adequately say that yeah this works for a complete beginner because it's going to say keywords that I know pretty much like the back of my hand that a complete beginner who's doing all of this for the first time will be like, what the heck's a variable? But from an experienced person to someone who knows a bit of RPG Maker and all of the terms, but does not exactly know how to get exactly to where they need to be, I can say that ChatGPT may be a useful resource. Now mid-journey, mid-journey was an interesting thing and it was very interesting because mid-journey has a free trial and that free trial only gives you somewhere between 20 to 30, I don't know the proper term, so I'm gonna just say renders. In other words, you can ask mid-journey 20 to 30 times to imagine something for you before the free trial ends. Now what you can do is create another Discord account. <laughs> there are really two things that I want to talk about with mid-journey and it's creating concept art and creating art that you can drag directly into RPG Maker as opposed to needing to do any work in between. We'll start with the concept art. So for the most part, I found that creating concept art worked very, very well. And someone with some pixel art skills, I was able to create my pixel art base off of that concept art. Then again, you guys decide, I probably shouldn't be the one to judge. But there were some things that it just could not do, such as the symbols in a tree. And no matter how many times I worded it and tried changing things, it just would not get it. Also, with mid-journey, even though you put terms, it kind of just ignores it completely. Because the first thing that I wanted to do was to imagine Evelyn and Sarah from head to toe so I could see their entire outfit, but instead what it kept giving me was the portrait so from like torso and up and that just was not enough for me granted I'm, I'm pretty sure that legs aren't all that hard to imagine and create on my own head so there's that i think the thing about mid journey is that 
similar to ChatGPT, it has its own aspect of things, you know, kind of like it has its own brain, and it sees things in a very certain way. So whenever you ask it to create a render, it will always give it to you in that certain way, which is the hyperrealism that you tend to see. Now you can ask it to change it into the style of someone else, and for the most part it does work. But again, I feel like there's still this certain way that Midjourney always sees things, and it will always render it in that sort of way. Also, it ain't perfect. I think we've seen it with Sierra that it ain't exactly perfect. <laughs> now one of the questions that you guys probably thought of was, can I create something with Midjourney and then just immediately import it into RPG Maker and make it playable and work that way? And the answer to that is yes, but there's an asterisk to all of this. In the free trial version, you'll always have a set resolution size. So no matter what you do, you're going to have to create the edits on your own. Which if you did not know, determines the size of your graphics and the size of your maps if you're going for that. If you were to pay for a mid-journey, that I cannot answer you. I like to believe that it can work, but if you're trying to go for maps in particular, then you're going to have to do a lot of work just because of RPG Maker and how each tile is 48 by 48. So you gotta adjust the map appropriately, especially with the whole clipping sort of thing where if your character is say two tiles high and there's an awkwardness with say a tree where it's positioned on the map. Well, if you walk in front of that tree, there's a chance that there can be a little bit of a cutoff and then things will just look extremely awkward. So while I do think it's possible, I also think that there's a lot of work that needs to be done before you can just move it from mid-journey into RPG Maker. Also don't forget it costs money, which is probably the most important thing, let's be real. <laughs> so with all that said, what do I think? I think they work as great assistance and less so as a tool that you can, where you can just generate stuff and paste it directly into RPG Maker. I'll admit that when I first went into this, I thought it would be more of that as opposed to the assistant, but I gotta admit, it humbled me. AI for game dev is actually not as simple as that. Do I think it's a useful tool? Absolutely. Do I think it's a tool that everyone should use? I think it's a tool that everyone should at least try. Do I think it's a tool that everyone should always use? Absolutely not. Kind of like how I mentioned before that ChatGPT and Midjourney kind of has their own brains. So if you imagine that if everyone created a game using the assistance of AI, then it's going to feel like, well, everything's going to start feeling the same. If there's anything that can be said, I would say that game development is a form of creativity. It really sets one person from another. So instead of relying on AI, instead, just use it as a support system. I think I will definitely be using ChatGPT again. I think I went with Midjourney. Pretty sure we all know why. <laughs> Though I may try a different AI art generator just to help me think and create some concept art. But hey, at the end of the day, this is just my opinion. I would love to hear yours. Have you tried using AI before? And if you have, let us all know. What sort of project are you creating? If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate the like. And other than that, I'll see ya in the next one. Till then, ladder. Hey guys, so this is gonna be crazy, but I'm actually at PAX East doing some game dev. That's how dedicated your boy is. <laughs> see, I'm in a hotel room. I'm actually um, babysitting or doggy sitting. Gomi! She's absolutely adorable. Um, everyone went out to do some fine dining. 